Hey guys, be sure to check out the Mortar Pod, our weekly video podcast, and also check out the tutorial video for my board game, Travelers of Storia. Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're doing another Cons of Tarker Swiss Draft. We've got Ghostfire Blade, which I think is actually the pick, even though this pack has Suspension Field, which is a great card too. It's a really strong, really, really strong card. Very much like the Suspension Field, but Ghostfire Blade keeps this completely open, and uh, you don't even have to play Morph to actually make it good. So I'm down with awesome uh, equipment. What else is good in here? I like Awaken the Bear. I like Mardu Heart Piercer. Singing Bell Strike is playable. Throttle, same sort of deal. Feet of Resistance is great. I like the Rider. I like the Fixing Lands. Why is there two of them in here? I guess they're just common, so you can see five of them in a pack, technically, huh? All right, let's just take the Ghost Fire Blade. Uh, okay, follow up. Well, we can go any direction we want. I like the Just Sky student quite a bit. Big fan of two drops in general, and this one is definitely better than most because it has a lot of added value, especially even in the mid to late game. Um, nothing else in here is really drawing me to it. I mean, there's plenty of other playable cards, but I think I like... I'm just a big fan of two drops in this format. If I haven't already said it, I think I did. Um, then again, I really like the Mardu Warrior Beatdown. Is Ambusher better than Student, though? I, you know, that's actually, a de that's debatable. Ambusher versus Just Guy Student, I think, is pretty debatable. Um, I think the Student's probably got the edge, but getting rid of a blocker is really nothing to scoff at at all. I think this this can be an underrated ability. Plus, it equips easier with the Ghost Fire Blade. I'm still going to take the student. I just like the student in general. And I can still play Mardu Beatdown, but I guess he's not a warrior, is he? So maybe I needed to consider that. All right. Dead Drop's definitely good. Timely Horde Mate's a fantastic card, especially with our Just Sky student. Um, Tranquil Crove, Cove rather fixes. Mardu Skull Hunter is pretty good. I think the Horde Mate's probably got the, the go-ahead here. That's a pretty strong effect to have. Um, no Morph guys really. I guess Flock is actually Morph, so that's one. Um, I think we're just going to go with the Horde Mate. Keeps us on color with the Just Guys student and uh, is just a very good card in general, so I like it. I got blown out by Horde Mate plus Skull Hunter just a couple drafts ago. That was pretty brutal. But, I, yeah, let's take the Horde Mate. I'm cool with that. Okay, so now picks are Grizzly, uh, which could move us closer to Abzan. And I'm probably okay with that. Right of the Serpent, which is good. I'm actually a fan of Grizzly, and I never get a chance to play it. Grizzly just interacts so well with Ferocious at such a reasonable cost. It's kind of why I'm such a big fan of it. Plus, I was kind of in the mood to play Beatdown anyway. Um, so I'm kind of tempted to just take the Grizzly, start moving towards Abzan, likely. Which is fine. I feel like I rarely play Abzan, so maybe this would be a good opportunity. Um, okay, well, Defiant Strike is definitely good uh, in just sky, if I end up that direction instead. Um, I don't think it's a Defiant Strike pick here, though. I'm kind of feeling the Loxodon, because I like Morph, and because he's a good finisher. Um, nothing else is really standing out in black as being all that good. Outlast is fine. This guy's actually a good blocker. I um, think I want to take the Loxodon. Fine Strike is definitely good with the student, but uh, I'm going to take the Loxodon. I like having that. People tend to value fixing a lot higher than I do, um, but I just feel like I'm going to like this color combination more. Um, hmm. Well, this is a good Just Sky card. Kind of have a couple green picks already. I don't necessarily need another Loxodon. Well, 
I guess we can take Blossoming Sands here. I could also just take the Weapon Master and start moving into just Sky, but then I sort of negate these two picks. Let's just take the Blossoming Sands. I feel like Abzan can still work. It's hard to make it not work. Um, Riverwheel Aerialist is definitely good. I'm fine with Disowned Ancestor. It's probably the best pick for us. Very good blocker. Works really well with the uh, Kintry Invocation as well. Um, okay, so now um, Kintry Warden is fine. It's a morph dude. Wields a Ghost Fire Blade rather well. So does the Ancestor, actually. Uh, yeah, I think we go with Kintry Warden. I like it. Well, I guess War Behemoth's an option, too, isn't it? Well, maybe we go War Behemoth instead, then. I probably like 3 power, 6 toughness more than the 1-1 one, one regen. Feet of Resistance is an amazing table, so I'm going to take that over the second Blossoming Sands. Big fan of Feet. Very surprised to see a table, as a matter of fact. It's a super powerful spell. We can take Bitter Revelation here. Even if we're not Delve, it's nice to just have that effect in the deck. I like it a little bit more than the... I actually just don't like this card that much. And uh, I think I want to make Absan... I'd like to make Absan work, so let's take the black card. Bitter Revelation's pretty good. Unyielding Krumar seems correct, yeah. I mean, Retribution works well with Ancestor, Feet... And that's about it. So we could get more, but I'm not really feeling it. Let's just take the Krumar. Who is a fine beater? Brave the Sands. You know, I've been wanting to play this card. So there's a chance we do. Otherwise, I'm taking a sideboard card. But I feel like this card's pretty reasonable. If you have high toughness guys especially, which we potentially do, I'm going to take it. It still gets prowess too, which is nice. All right, we'll take the Defiant Strike here. Works well with prowess. Um, so we only got a couple green picks, which is interesting. Could be getting cut on that front. Didn't get any multicolor cards, which is a bit worrisome. So kind of an underwhelming pack one beyond the Ghost Fire Blade. Uh, we have a couple morph though already, which is good for the blade. This Grizzly's been impressing me though. This is a good card. It does die to the two drop uh, black card. That name escapes me right now, but the minus two minus two aura, whatever it's called. I should know because I've, I think it's such a strong card and I would probably play it in this deck if we saw it, but maybe we will see it. Jeez. He's a strong uh, flying crane technique. is a strong finisher. Kind of feeling the chief of the edge, especially since we've already got a couple. This guy's actually a warrior, too. Hilariously enough, this guy's definitely a warrior. That guy's a warrior. We've got enough warriors where, even if you don't have a warrior heavy deck, chief of the edge is very good. People probably would go Nomad Outpost first, or at least suggest that to me, but I actually want to kind of play a warrior beatdown deck a little bit. This guy's also a warrior, too. Yeah. We have enough warriors already where I'm really going to like getting this Chief of the Edge. Hopefully table a Skull Hunter, more likely table a Krumar or a Rush of Battle. But uh, Chief of the Edge is fine. Very good, actually. Abzan Ascendancy. Well, there's a reward. Happily taken that. I've lost against this card enough to know it's amazing. So we'll pick that up. Um, passing nothing too crazy for our deck otherwise. I'd probably, if we're playing beatdown, Briber's Purse gets a lot better. Uh, nothing else of note, really. So, happily taking Abzan Ascendancy. So, it would appear that we're, I think what we're going to try and do is be a very strong, a, uh, uh, white-black deck. And then we'll splash for the green for the Ascendancy and Loxodon and stuff. Grizzly, a little bit more sketchy on the splash, but depends on how many more good uh, green cards we see. All right, pretty excellent cards out of here. Uh, Abzan Battle Priest is very good. Gotta love that Outlast. 
Lanark Bonkin is also very good. Nice two drop. Scavenger is a warrior, as a matter of fact. So is Disowned Ancestor, but I don't think I need number two of that. Raider Spoilers is an actual card, too. I haven't gotten a chance to play the Spoilers yet. Or the Raider Spoils, rather. It's pretty nice, actually. I mean, you just start, it boosts all your guys. I think I'm going to take it. You know, I never play this, and I think it's actually a really good card. It boosts all your guys regardless. And I'm already trying to be Warriors, so I could potentially just start paying life and drawing cards, which seems really good. I like the Battle Priest and the Bondkin, but I, I'm going to go Raider Spoils here. Just on a hunch that I can find the right Warriors I need. Um, let's see here. Um, admittedly, not too much for us here. If I take the War Shrieker, then it's going to be tough to make green work at all. Seek the Horizon is not good on the splash. Shambling Attendance is fine ordinarily, but we don't have much for Graveyard Filler. A little bit, but not a lot. Doodle Full Return I haven't played yet. I mean, it is playable. It's just not an exciting pick here. It's just not a very exciting pack in general for us, really. I guess I'll take the return. It's probably easier to play than the 8-drop. All right, Chief of the Scale, I'll happily pick that up, I think. Yeah, get another Warrior, Lord. Pretty happily take that. Playing the old beatdown. All right, here's a Warrior that gives us another Warrior, too. So, perfect for this deck. Ride down an arrow storm, good for red. Awaken the bear, also good. This is an interesting. Usually it's Mardu Warrior beatdown, but uh, we can definitely get away with playing green in here if it's just our splash, and just focusing on the um, focusing on the white black. I'd like to upgrade, I'd definitely like to upgrade some of these picks, but so far I'm, I'm not terribly unhappy with this, to be honest. Uh, Just Guy Student number two, Ponyback Brigade is definitely good, but I just don't think I want, I'd, I'd rather focus on the good green cards we have, which is pretty much just the Ascendancy, admittedly, but I do, this Ascendancy is pretty nuts. Let's take the Student, it's just good. It attacks really well. It's good for raid. It's not a warrior, but it's not a big deal either. All right. Skull Hunter, I'm going to take over the Hate Blade. I do like the Hate Blade, but Skull Hunter is just a really nice beater. It's also a warrior like the Hate Blade. I mean, Hate Blade, Death Touch. Death Touch is really good in this format, but so is Discard. That's actually tough. I mean, I want both. Both effects are good. Maybe I need actual one drops to turn on the rest of my raid. Ah, I don't know. Skull Hunter works better with the Horde Mate, but Hate Blade, we don't have much for removal, so having Hate Blade, I guess, actually does make sense. Um, God, all this late Mar Mardu stuff. I, I probably could have easily made a Mardu deck, but then again, not easily because I don't have a lot of fixing. Let's take the second Krumar. Play it over the Dutiful Return. We don't need that many. Four drops. Krumar is actually a fine card when you have actual warrior lords. Even if you don't, just being able to give it first strike is pretty nice. Maybe we're not playing the Bitter Revelation either. I haven't decided yet. We can take the Calvary, but we're not playing red, so it's pretty awful. I guess we take the Dread Maw, but that also is not that good for us. Leaping Master is a fine two drop, I guess. I mean, I'm not playing Dread Moss. So let's just take the Leaping Master. Maybe all these. Maybe I have to take all these late red cards. Rush of Battle seems good with a Warrior strategy. I don't think Highland Game is going to be super playable if we're just splashing green. So, all right. Let's take the Rush of Battle. We look okay. I should have been in red rather than green. The green cards I have I like, but we're not splashing that likely. And Splashing Loxodon and Abzan Ascendancy are actually perfectly fine. Um, I mean, I'd like to be in red. I just, I really don't think it's working. I don't think we're going to play Bitter Revelation either, since we're already kind of 
clumped up in the four drop slot. So I only need a few cards in the last pack, which is nice. I may switch into red, but it's probably too late now. I don't need any of these. Seek can be good some places, I guess. Barrage could be good against us. Probably better than Cancel would be. Um, yeah, so far it's a little bit underwhelming. It's not terrible. It's certainly not a terrible deck. We still have a reasonable beatdown plan. I think the main issue is we should have been Mardu, but I waited too long because I wanted to make this Ascendancy work because it's a really good card. Uh, but we'll see if it's a problem. Look at that whole Ascendancy Raider spoils. Look at that. Look at that disgusting synergy. I'm just making 2-1 flyers all day. It's pretty good. So I need four cards to make a 23-card deck. I'd like a couple more pieces of fixing to just totally minimize the green splash in this deck. If we're playing Beatdown, the uh, Brave the Sands looks a lot worse. So I guess we can dump that. Good two drops, good one drops. I'd like some more Chief of the Edges. I do sort of like the Mardu, or just, it's not even necessarily Mardu. I like the black-white beatdown strategy in this format. I do like that. Chief of the Edge is just a good card. I don't think anybody can argue that. This seems constructed playable, to be honest. It's a sad day if two mana three twos aren't playable and constructed. Um, let's see here. Horde Chief number two, I think it's just going to slam get picked here. It's exactly filling our curve and just does what we want it to do. Especially with the rush of battle. Yeah, let's take the Horde Chief. Bloodsucker's cute, but this is not the deck for it by any means. Actually, Snakeskin, I'm hoping we table, because I would probably play that in this deck at this point. Seems like it could get put in pretty easily. All right. Next. Um, I think we just slam the Debilitating Injury, which is the card I was searching for earlier. Other notable cards in here. Yeah, Harriers. Actually, really playable in here, now that I know it's a warrior. Yeah, Sage Eye Harrier would be good, but I mean, I'm still going to take the injury. We we don't have any removal. We ended up with, like, no removal. Feet of Resistance combat trick, and that's it. So, yeah, let's take the injury. Excellent card. Uh, Sidisi's cute, but not on color. Dragon Scale Boon's probably not worth the splash. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Nothing much for us here. I don't think I need a 7-drop. I don't think I need a Siege Craft. Especially since I already have one in sideboard. I guess we can take the Erase for the sideboard. Yeah, Dragon Scale Boon on the Splash. Especially with the amount of 4-drops we have. I'm not digging it. Alright, Erase is gone. Hate blade number two seems fine. Pet is not a warrior, so... Oh, well, Skull Hunter. I do feel like because I don't have any uh, removal, I'm going to actually need the Death Touchers, as disappointing as that is, because I'd love to play this Skull Hunter. I think we got to take the Hate Blade. I want some early beaters to go with our Lords. I was kind of hoping we'd get some more Lords, too, to be honest. Abzan Guide seems pretty good. Jungle Hollow would give us some more fixing, though. But we don't have we don't have any of the value, guys. I guess we're we're likely playing what one green card, probably not even the Loxodon on if we can get enough picks. I was just thinking we can probably take Jungle Hollow and have all the green fixing we need, so we don't get thrown off on the rest of our mana base. I'm gonna take the Hollow here. I like the Abzan Guide a lot. Gonna have to let it go. Alright. Uh, Just Guy Student number three. 
which is probably pretty acceptable. We still actually need cards in here. I think Abzan Guide's going to get the go-ahead now because uh, it's an actual warrior. It's a nice finisher. It does require green, but you can just morph it. Ghost Fireblade people down. I like Student in here a lot, too. Got Defiant Strike, Feet, Injury, Rush, all of which are good. I'm going to take the Life Linker. Seems pretty good in here, too. So, one card short of a deck. Even if we didn't find a card, we've got a couple we could throw in, but... Let's see here. Um, I think we just take the Orc Warrior, continue with the Warrior plan over the Witness. Makes sense. Awaken the Bear in this deck is probably good, but... Let's continue to minimize the green splash. The nice thing is, two of our green cards are morph, so you're really in no rush to get a green source. We could probably pretty easily get away with four green sources, if that much. Bondkin, though, very good in here, being a warrior and all. This deck looks okay. You know, it's not terribly exciting. Um, I think it's so short on removal that that could be a big deal. But uh, then again, we've got random... Quick starts. We've got some weird tricks to do. I think we could we can power out enough creatures to still uh, steamroll people potentially. Scavenger is a warrior. Throttle is good removal. Savage Punch is typically good removal, and here not as much, especially on the splash. So I don't think Savage Punch is getting the go ahead. I guess Throttle because we really are that short on removal. So I'm going to take the Throttle and likely cut. Uh, one of our creatures, maybe the Beast. Loxodon's an actual warrior, so kind of want to play it. I know it's greedy, but... Yeah, I think we just take the Throttle and then likely cut the Behemoth. This is a pretty good curve. It's not that bad. We actually have a couple of removal spells now, which is also nice. The Rush of Battle looks pretty good. We ended up with a really fair amount of Warriors, I would say. We did table the Molting Snakeskin, which I'm going to take. And possibly play. It's a pretty strong card when you've got Death Toucher, especially. Death Touch Regen 3-1. It's pretty nice. Um, I have to cut if I want to play the Snakeskin. So I guess the Snakeskin is still probably the weakest card in our deck, so we can cut it. Ancestor is actually fine since it's a warrior, um, but it's not as aggressive as I'd like. It also randomly still turns on uh, Raid, and it can still be brought back with Horde Mate, which is kind of cool too. Sage Eye Harrier, I'm very happy we tabled this. I'm going to take it and play it because it's a warrior. So let's maximize our, our Lord benefits because we have the Spoils, we have the Chiefs. So... What is the cut? I would prefer to not cut any warriors, but I think we actually somehow maximized warriors already. The only non-warriors are our Jeskai students, which are just good on their own. Um, none of these cards matter to me, so I'm just going to take the Foil Swamp, which we'll play. Uh, let's see here. I have to make one cut, huh? Hmm. I definitely still like the Harrier. The fact that he's a warrior is huge, especially with spoils. Possibly the Loxodon, just because it's on the splash, but I still like it. I think our deck's short enough on late game plans where I kind of want the Loxodon, but then again, maybe I cut the Bond Cannon instead. I'd rather have a 6-7 for one additional mana. We can take the Ape. It's also cool that it's a zombie ape, by the way, but take the ape with lifelink. It's probably pretty good against us. Um, I guess I can cut the bondkin over the loxodon. Like I said, I think I would rather, even on our splash caller, have a 6-7 six, for 6 than a 5-3 for 5. I mean, I guess the dilemma is we'd never be able to hard cast loxodon. It's debatable. Maybe we do dump the Loxodon because it's the splash color, like I said. I don't know. That's tough. I guess we'll take a Yeti. We're not playing the banner. Roar of Challenge is actually pretty good. Probably on the splash, it's still fine, too. 
but uh, yeah, actually, this is this is probably a card we want to play. To be honest, um, I need to find how to get it in here. But uh, you just you if we end up with a board state where I you know they have too much stuff defending, playing Roar of Challenge pretty much reads win the game. So I think I am gonna try and fit Roar of Challenge in here try and figure out how to do that. We might actually end up cutting the Defiant Strike. As much as I like it in aggressive decks, we didn't get a ton of prowess to support it, so that seems like an easy cut. We'll cut the Defiant Strike. Separate creatures and spells right now. Um, Ghost Fire Blade is great. All of these are very good, so I don't think we want to cut any of our spells, including the Rush. I would like to make Roar of Challenge work in here. I do think that's good enough, even on the splash, to take a game down. So let's cut one creature. Um, I, overall, I like Loxodon more than Bondkin, I think. I, I just prefer to have a 6-7, even if it's a little bit slower. And green, I think I'd still rather have it than the Bondkin. I mean, the Bondkin can be hard cast for 5 mana, which is good. But Loxodon being a six six sevens are hard to take down. That is a really tough creature to kill. Um, how many green sources do I want to play? I have two actual cards that straight up require green, and then two cards that could just be gray ogres if I never get green. So maybe I, th I think I just go with four green sources total. So the sands, the hollow, and two uh, two forests. Um, so, let me look at the colors again. So, oh, let's combine, okay. So, more white than black, that makes sense. We need both early, though. We only have four green sources. We have a white and a black source in dual lands. So... Three, what is it? Three, six, seven, eight white sources and seven black sources. That's a bit sketchy. I guess yeah, we do need white more than black early, but we need to see black at some point. Our mana base is a little bit concerning to me. could cut one of our forests and go down to three green sources and then get to up to eight and eight, which makes me feel more comfortable. Eight black, eight white, three green. I think I'm going to go with this. Um, and because I'm doing that, I think I'm actually going to cut the Loxodon for the Bondkin as a last second cut. I like Loxodon more, but since it's going to harm our mana base to play four green sources, I think, um, I'd rather just play three and make Roar of Challenge be, you know, a late game finisher. Abzan Ascendancy, same sort of thing. Very good in the late game. Abzan Guide, never unmorphing, would suck, but Grey Ogre, that potentially is a 4-4, seems fine. All right, so I'll play it like this. Overall, I don't know how good this deck is. It's okay. Uh, I wish I'd gone Mardu, like I said, but I think I'm interested in seeing how this sort of Abzan beatdown goes since I've got some pretty nice uh, early game plays. So, yes, we'll see how this plays. I'll see round one. Oh, I got glitched. Okay. I don't recall glitching, but apparently I did. Bonkin, let's make sure we get all of the goodies back in here. That's 23. Here's our fixing. Foil Swamp, of course. And then the final count I wanted. So I've got a swamp in there already. So this would be, what, seven? So, no, go that down. 
And this one up. That's. I have to look. Uh, let's see. Three, six, seven white sources. Three, six, eight black sources. Oh, no, that's right. I cut that and then I had a planes. Okay. This is right. Eight sources of white, eight sources of black, three sources of green. Very good. All right. Going to run it like this. I'll see you around one.